So I've learned the best way to find something you've lost is to buy it again. Because once you do, the one that's missing will turn back up. Now, my Marlin Spike was not purchased. I made it myself out of 3 8 aluminum stock. I'm going to make an upgraded one. This is half inch. And I'm sure that once I'm done making this, it'll turn back up. Set my lathe to 5 degrees. And now it's just a matter of running this thing back and forth until I get a point. So we've maxed out what I can do with my lathe, at least with the carriage here. So now I'm going to transition to a file. With the file, I'll finish bringing this to a point and then I'll round off the shoulder here. Alright, we got the basic shape. It's looking really rough. This would be awful to try to push through and work with rope and cord. So now I'm going to take some 180 grit sandpaper and start to get all these marks out. Move it on to 800. Here I have some metal polish. So I told you, while I was making this video, I found my Marlin Spike it fell in the back of this box. Usually I put it on the shelf that's right above here. It fell down and then I just closed the lid. And so I couldn't find it, but now that we have it, let's keep going. When it comes to determining how long your Marlin spike should be, I imagine that this point is gonna be in my palm and then I'm going to be piercing the rope. I'll just mark that off. Right there by my thumb is a little mark I made with the file. I'll just highlight that. Now luckily I found my old marlin spike. I'm going to use that as a gauge on where to land my groove. That should be good right about there. Oh no! Gosh darn it! Look what I did. As I was cutting this, this corner got too close and it gouged this out. Ah. All right, let's get that fixed. All right, we're getting places. I just put some electrical tape on here to help protect it as I put it back in the jaws so that I don't have to do so much polishing after I cut this end off. Now we just need to buff this out, and then we can tie our Turk's head. As I tie this, you'll notice I'm not using proper rope terminology. I'm just using what makes sense to me. I'll start by using my left thumb to hold the cord in place. Then I'll wrap around, come towards the front, and I'll make an X. I'll keep wrapping. I'll make sure this tail end here is in between my turns. And this is what we should look like when we're getting ready to start. All right, now this consists of what I call jumps and dives. I jump to the right, I dive to the left. When I jump, I simply jump over the top of my cord here, and then I'll go underneath the cord next to it. Okay. Now when it's time to dive to the left, I'll take the cord. On this side, I'll bring it over the top, and I'll create a window. There's my window, and now I'll dive into that hole. 
And that's what we're gonna do over and over again until we've completed our weaving all the way around. Okay, now it's time to jump to the right. I'll jump over that strand. Okay, we're gonna dive to the left. I'll take this piece, throw it over the top to create a window. There we go, there's our window. I'll dive into that hole. Okay, we're getting close here. Now it's time to jump to the right. There we go. Okay, now we're done because we've met back up with our loose end on the other side and we have our weave going all the way around. Now this is gonna be pretty tight, so I'm gonna add some excess play in here so that I have some room to weave everything through. Because towards the end, it'll get tight pretty quick. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this loose end here and I'm gonna chase it all the way around. So you see here, it starts to come through. I'm just gonna parallel my paracord fit here and I'm just gonna start threading it through. There we go, I'm following that one. See? Now I'll just do that all the way around. I have three strands that I'm chasing, so I'm gonna go around three times. All right, we've done it. Now when we get to the end here, I like to use a razor blade to cut these off, but I'm just gonna use my scissors right now. Okay, and then what we do is we take these ends and we just tuck them underneath so that it looks like one continuous weave. Check this out. When I take this off, look at how many jumps we have. I'll start right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you look at my Marlin spike, I only have one, two, three, four. So the diameter is gonna affect how many times you go around. All right, we're gonna use blue. So we're done here. This is way too loose, so I'm just gonna go through and tighten everything up. To do that, I'll just take a strand in the back and I'll pull out some slack and I'll just chase it around the entire Turk's head.
Here's my completed Marlins bike with the Turks head on top. This one's made out of half inch aluminum bar stock and I cut it so that it would fit in my palm as I'm using it to work rope. It's just a little bit longer than the one I originally made. This one's made out of 3 8 But they come in pretty handy as you're taking knots apart and as you're pulling tension into different cords.